We have a serious nutrient problem on Cape Cod. There's simply too much nitrogen in our embayments. Most of it comes from human pollution, primarily septic systems, and to a lesser extent, fertilizer from our lawns. Shellfish aquaculture will help filter nitrogen from our saltwater estuaries, but there are limits. I do like working outside. I feel very fortunate to be here and uh, work close to the earth, dial into the uh, musings of Mother Nature. Our day is usually built around retrieving the oysters at low tide. Today, that low tide was at the break of day, thanks to the full moon. Still waiting for the signs of spring to warm us up. Well, at least we're not breaking ice. Right now, the priority is um, to get the uh, oysters prepared for Wednesday sale. Once I feel confident that we're prepared for that, um, then um, I can do other things like that involve maintaining the crop, uh, switching out trays, uh, sizing the oysters. <coughs> we want the trays not to be too fouled, especially with that sponge, so it doesn't proliferate. So we're trying to uh, cut down on the biofouling. But the filtering, filtering uh, capacity of the oysters is the, is the shining star, is a primary contributor to helping uh, um, mitigate the nitrogen loading in our bays. And uh, it's through that uh, robust and regular shellfish population that uh, we hope will contribute to cleaning the bays for everyone. I call them my magnificent bivalves. They take in the nutrients and convert them to meat and shell. And then we are allowed to remove pounds of, of nitrogen that is measurable. Aquaculture on Cape Cod is primarily shellfish aquaculture and primarily two species, quahogs or hard clams and um, oysters, the American oyster. Um, we've been talking with a, a lot of the towns who were facing their their wastewater issues and and towns are looking at options on how how to address that so uh, this is one of our stations here in Barnstable Harbor that the town helps us maintain this is the town oyster propagation site and, you know we do our best to try to get data or water quality data close to uh, shellfish growing areas as you know, those folks make their living on the water and really want to know what's going on in the water. Cape Cod and much of the East Coast has just seen a resurgence in oyster aquaculture in particular. Right now there are probably 350 farms in Massachusetts that are farming oysters. They produce about $12 million of product on, on an annual basis. And uh, that's a doubling in the last five years. So it's growing exponentially. We have historically, traditionally had a wild oyster fishery, but just the natural environment that we're growing in is very conducive to oysters. So you're bringing nutrients from Cape Cod Bay and the ocean in and out every day. You're getting a larger variety of foods, phytoplankton's, that you're not going to get in other areas. That is sort of the natural makeup of Wall Fleet that makes it really productive. It's a huge economic resource. You are feeding people. When you look at the amount of shellfish seafood that we import, uh, we can be growing a lot of our own, and we'll need to in the future. And so that, that is definitely an avenue that we should be pursuing. And you're also removing nitrogen as you're harvesting. 
These are several dozen oysters that uh, we've grown here at the MBL. Um, I talked about these little aquatic engineers and how efficient they are at filtering the water. And so this is some algae that we grew here at the MBL, but these are naturally available. There, that's a good meal for these guys. And I calculate that in this five gallon aquarium, with this many oysters in here, that the oysters should be able to filter the algae out of the water and make it virtually clear in the course of about two to three, maybe four hours at the most. Wampanoag Bay, where at Wampanoag derived from the Wampanoag meaning summer place. Um, resources were a big part of, of all Indian life. You couldn't live, you didn't have a store. We moved to the edge of the waters, just down south, summer place, Wampanoag, because you could harvest fresh fish, shellfish. So it was, it was crucial that these were pure and clean. And as you can look to the sides, the river is packed now with houses, um, nitrogen levels from houses, from development up the river has impacted our way of life and our ability to harvest enough to actually sustain. Part of the Natural Resources Department, we see water quality sampling as extremely important. As a water quality is our way back to our lifeways, the lifeways that we're accustomed to. Working with Constable York, um, we've been able to develop a really great program in water quality monitoring. We've also working with Rick, been able to develop an aquaculture project to try and reduce the nitrates in the environment to help the bay come back. We're growing a couple million oysters seed right now in the river. The oysters have been filtering algae such that um, we haven't had any fish kills. 2005 and fish kills are increasing in other areas of Cape Cod as the nutrient loads are increasing, the algae blooms are getting worse, and we have a plan to try and clean up the whole bay with oysters. If that's what we're gonna, that's our goal. We'll see if we can get there or not. Aquaculture is is kind of one tool in a a systematic approach to restoring the health of the rivers and the bays here on the Cape. There's no, there's no silver bullet here. You know, we have to, uh, we have to be aware of our surroundings and of all approaches, and um, and just be conscious that we're not saying, okay, we found the solution, so now we can, we can, you know, go on as we have because we need to, we need to adapt and we need to, uh, to restore a balance, and this is this is one of the ways to do that. We also need to um, treat the nitrogen at the sources, which the biggest source is septic systems on Cape Cod, there's decades of nitrogen that are still coming in the groundwater. So we can use shellfish now to clean up the bays before they get worse. I think if it wasn't for the oysters, it would be havoc out in the water. I think the quality, would, you, you wouldn't, it would it'd be so much nitrogen in the water, you would be getting anoxic bottom and there'd be nothing alive. I think that, yeah, it's important what we're doing with oysters, and I think they are doing their job, but I don't think that that's an excuse not to be responsible. I don't think it, it's realistic to look at shellfish as being the sole source of remediating all of the nitrogen inputs into our waters. These are living organisms, and they can fall prey to predators or disease or weather events, and that would sort of negate, um, you know, the, the 
the nitrogen removal that you were depending on those animals taking out? It's it's part and parcel of the of the of the answer, um, but I think looking at a wide variety of adaptive management uh, means is is, is going to be important. We as a tribe have a responsibility because we believe seven generations we need to prepare for. If we do have an opportunity to fix this, we have an opportunity to make it better for the people that go in front of us. Personally, I'm about to be 60 and I haven't done enough to secure my grandchildren's grandchildren some portion of what I had as a child. But if we can bring back any little piece to give them some, that'll make my life a success. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> As you've seen, growing shellfish is hard work. Shellfish filter better in the summer than in the winter. Shellfish are susceptible to disease and predation and not all waters will support shell fishing. Just as important, while shellfish do a great job filtering nitrogen and algae, they are susceptible to other pollutants like heavy metals, PCBs, and some pharmaceuticals. The value of shellfish diminishes if they're not safe to eat. We need to be mindful of everything we flush down the toilets or put on our lawns. The Association to Preserve Cape Cod urges every town to promote our shellfish heritage and have active, publicly supported aquaculture programs. Oysters are not only part of our heritage, they must be part of our future. We all have a role to play in clean water. Oysters can't do it alone. Do your part, conserve and protect water. Watch the products that you use. Urge your local officials to support local aquaculture. And most of all, enjoy the natural food we produce here on Cape Cod. <laughs>